Will, it started with a simple question. It was the fall 2009, and our CEO at the time walked into my office and sat down. I was the, his leader of investor relations and communications, and he looked at me and he just said, hey, Lori, why don't women help other women get ahead? Go do something about that. And he walked out the door. <laughs> now, I was a little taken aback. I had worked hard in my career. I was known as driving performance and results. And I didn't know if I wanted to take on something that could be, appear to be a soft project. So I sat back, and I quickly made some phone calls, calling some of my other fellow women leaders in Quest to get their perspective. Pat, what did you think? I remember getting one of those phone calls. At the time, I was leading our laboratory operations in California, and I remember thinking, is this really that big of a deal? I mean, I didn't think my gender had impacted my career. And then I went to our next leadership meeting. And when I walked into the room, it was structured somewhat like this, although smaller. And I looked around, and I saw one woman at each table. And that's when it hit me. This was a big deal, and this was important. And with that, that's later that fall, we kept digging into it. And I realized that behind that seemingly simple and light question, there was a lot behind it. If we looked at that point in time, our board of directors was approximately a third female. The CEO's team was about a third female. Our employee base was 70% female and highly diverse. Our customer base, we know that physicians coming out of medical school were roughly 50% female, and most healthcare decisions were made by females. So this wasn't some light, frivolous question. It really was a business imperative because our leadership pipeline did not reflect those other realities around us. So after recruiting 12 fearless women from around the company, Will was formed, and we took on the challenge. I remember that first Will meeting. It was a meeting with all women. I was actually a little bit intimidated. I mean, that was like way out of my comfort zone. I was afraid, what happens if the conversation drifts to designer clothing, you know, when I'm happy when I show up at work and I'm not covered with dog hair? But I quickly realized that we all wanted the same thing. Even though the conversation started with mentoring, we knew that the root cause went way beyond mentoring. Women were leaving and dropping off because they couldn't see a path to leadership positions. They, this is a little nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> but they had fewer informal mentors and sponsors to pull them along. In fact, let's hear what some of our senior vice presidents had to say about the situation. So there were lots of opportunities. So in order to get the support and the resources that we need, we had to fully build a business case. So we knew that the impact of women in healthcare as consumers, providers, physicians, employees was really powerful. So we did some research. We reached out to some of the, our colleagues. We talked to employees. And that helped us, that data helped provide the, the purpose of will, women in leadership, to build and expand the leadership pool of tomorrow by investing in our female employees today and giving them the leadership competency skills that they needed to succeed. How did we focus in on this strategy? Where did we go first? Well, so we actually divide, we set up on very targeted programs. We said that we wanted to work on development programs, we wanted to do mentoring, and we wanted to do networking. So we were on our way. We had the great strategy. We, we, we had worked, we had mapped the competencies, the 12 women were out, check, check. Were we driving impact? Yeah, not quite the first time. Well, we were delivering good programs. We made a critical mistake at the initial launch of, of Will. We had 12 women trying to carry the weight of a program company-wide with thousands and thousands of employees. We had passion, we had energy. We didn't have the stamina or the bandwidth to make it sustainable. So we took a step back and we rebooted Will. 
So we were happy with our purpose. We believed in the purpose. We believed in the high-level strategy. It was our business tactics that needed some work. So we took a step back. We looked at our governance structure, and we made some changes. So we developed a company-wide steering committee, and it was comprised of both men and women, vice presidents and executive directors. We established chairs for critical positions so we could do development programs. Well, in those development programs, I think, uh, Pat, the part that was really critical was when we added the grassroots component, and we really started to diversify who was engaged. That's true. That was a game change for us. We had a robust grassroots effort, and we went out and found strong local leaders to provide the support. Um, initially, when we started, it was four chapters and, you know, several members. Within 24 months, we had grown to 10 chapters and hundreds of members. And today, we have 16 active chapters, over 1,200 members, and we are in the process right now of launching our first two international chapters in India and in Mexico. <laughs> So these changes were not only uh, helped us with the growth of the program, but they also helped us with the sustainability of the program and the impact. We were able to locally, at a local level, take business initiatives and combine it with the training and our programs. And matter of fact, our West region led the way in these initiatives. So let's hear from our general manager in the West and our will leader. The grassroots were pivotal, and uh, to say our leaders came along willingly would probably be a bit of an overstatement. I think we had to clearly identify and sell them on the value and what the benefits would be to them to be a chapter leader. Absolutely. And I think they would tell you it's definitely helped them step up and step out in their career. The other element that was pretty critical was obviously our partnering with our HR colleagues to help influence and advocate for certain practices that we think were important. And as we look forward, we now move forward, this is now seven years past that, and we have seen, you know, the numbers are really exciting to me on the members. What's more important to me is going back to our purpose. Our purpose is to build the leadership pool of tomorrow by expanding and investing in women's co leadership competencies today. And the need is for the business sustainability, obviously, for Quest to have that most, that the best the business and leadership team possible. And I think when we look on that dimension, that's where I'm particularly pleased to see that compared to 2009, we do have an expanded pipeline. We do have more women in critical roles. And we do hear as we're bringing in new, exec, new females into the organization that they look up and around and see more women in positions and more people like them. And that's really exciting because that's really starting to drive the impact. We're also starting to see that other networks in the organization, such as our young professionals and our um, African descent network, are looking at us to say, hey, what can we learn from you so we can replicate your success? And that also is really important because you're to help drive those other areas and other networks. So. You know, I think the program has been really wonderful, but let's hear from some of the people that have been helped, benefited from the program. When I think back to that simple question, which we fought a little bit at first, and then those 12 of us that really took it on, I'm really so excited and pleased with what's become of it. 12 to 1,200. Yeah, Lori and I stand in front of you today on behalf of 1,200 people in our program, and I am really proud of what they've helped us to create. And although it was a long and sometimes bumpy journey, um, this was our third submission for the ACE Award, I am really <laughs> proud. <laughs> We're pers we, we are persistent. We are. But I am really proud of the program that we put together and, and the 1,200 people that helped us do that. So uh, thank you for allowing us to tell you our story. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie and Pat. Uh, thank you for your persistence. It paid off. <laughs>
I'd like to invite uh, uh, Jeff Schumann up to the stage. Jeff is Senior VP and Chief Diversity um, HR Officer at Quest Diagnostics, and I would like to formally, on behalf of the HBA, bestow the 2016 ACE Award to Quest Diagnostics. We want to have a photo. Oops. He wants more of this. <laughs> this one. Lori, thank you, and thank you so much to the HBA. I am uh, thrilled and honored and, and really excited to, uh, to uh, accept this. And, and I accept this really on behalf of our 44,000 women and men that make up Quest Diagnostics and each and every day provide passionate commitment to uh, serving our, our, our patients. So I really want to thank our team. And we've got three tables here of, of some of our will leaders. And it's just so very, very exciting. You know, you had a chance over the last uh, about 15 minutes to hear a little bit about the will journey. Uh, we're certainly not done. We haven't hit the finish line yet. But we're making lots of progress. And there's really no secret sauce to this. This is about making sure that we provide opportunities for people, that we certainly develop people, and that we take an opportunity to really link the business with the development so that we can drive our business and have success. And we're making great strides. And I think as we continue down this path, we're not only developing our leaders to meet the needs of today, but certainly the needs of tomorrow. So thank you so very, very much. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.